What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're going to be looking at pattern editing between Studio One and everybody's favorite DAW, FL Studio. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be looking at pattern editing between FL Studio and Studio One. I got a comment on the piano roll um, tutorial um, talking about uh, different patterns and it made me think, I was like, you know, these two DAWs, they handle patterns in, um, in, in two very different ways and it was, um, it was actually one of the reasons why uh personally i couldn't i couldn't just i could not vibe with fl studio as my main go-to dog it just it slowed me down too much now before you fucking weirdos get all fucking weird in the comments bro like that doesn't mean that i hate fl studio and i don't want you to use fl studio and that i think you're whack for using fl studio fl studio is a fucking beast bro people make fucking donkey slappers in this shit it is a great doll but it's not for everybody and all i'm trying to show is that for the different type of people out there the people who think like me you know what i'm saying who are having pro who are having problems inside the fl studio environment that there's mad alternatives one of them being studio one so please miss me with the fucking dumbass comments about fl studio is the greatest all of all time because congratulations you play yourself with them type of stupid comments you let everybody know that you've never used anything else you know what i'm saying you hacked fl studio it lets you make music you get this euphoric rush from making music and from having a dream that you know that you're going to hopefully fulfill one day and you attach that to a doll that's inside you that's not attached to the technology bro you got to break out of that anyhow so what i'm talking about here the question was um i forgot who made the comment i should have shouted you out and i'm sorry fam but the the question was um you know when i when i make a a um when i send something to piano roll inside studio one you know and i make a pattern or whatever i um i can go ahead and i can create another pattern right go ahead and, and make pattern three and then use that same vst inside the piano roll and make a brand new pattern and i'm like all right cool yeah you know that's um that's obviously that's something that you could do in all DAWs, but the way that the way that fl studio handles the organization of the way that it stores its midi is not for me um and it's not for a lot of people and here's the reason why is if you start using this DAW, if your introduction into making music is fl studio that will make sense but if your introduction into making music is say i don't know rapping where you you record yourself on pro tools and when you want to make when you want to make your hook you record your hook and then you see it laid out um on a track like this and then when you make another when you make another stack of your hook it's here um and say you you say you have your verse your verse is over here and your ad libs are over here things start to this is called a linear uh, way of thinking you start to see things laid out uh, you know across a timeline that's how pattern changes make sense rather than a bin holding all of your patterns and then trying to arrange your patterns um by saying okay i want pattern three to play here and then i want to go back to pattern two and um i only want pattern two to play here and then of course within the realm of these patterns you have all of your different instruments or maybe you choose to use fl studio in a way like you would do studio one or pro tools where you just have one instrument per pattern either way the point is is that you don't need um a pattern bank to pull this off and it's actually um counterproductive um when you're working inside of a DAW 
if you think of terms if you think of things um in terms of linear um say you were say you started doing music as a guitar player as a lot of people start doing music and you're used to uh recording on a four track and you know you lay down you lay down your rhythm guitar and then you have um then you have a lead over top of it you know you're imagining that in your head as stacking on one on top of each other not going into you know a bank of um different um you know different patterns that you can pick from later so the way that you would create the way that you do that in studio one is super easy and you'll see this now is that if you want to if you wanted to create um say i wanted to create some chords with this pad right all you have to do is you drag your loop marker say say i wanted to make a say i wanted to make a you know a, a four bar pattern or something right so we'll go ahead and we'll drag our loop marker to four bars you double click inside that and it's going to make you a four bar slice right and say you wanted to go ahead and make yourself a you know some chords creating chords inside studio one is ultra easy all you have to do is pick a scale and then of course you know to make a triad all you have to do is use every other note in the scale so because you because studio one uh when you put the scale quantize in it locks you out of clicking a sour note it's really easy to once you have you know once once you have those those triads lined up is just to you know go ahead and experiment and see what it see what it comes out like so say i wanted to do this right All right, again, another awesome thing about the Studio One piano roll. I didn't even have to think about that. I just knew that I wanted to go up and down. I changed a couple notes. I have a beautiful chord progression, money, right? Now, say I wanted to change this up and I wanted to have um, have another pattern. To create another pattern, all I got to do is move my, um, move my loop marker here, double click. It's going to create another pattern inside the loop marker and then i could just say i want to do you know some long block chords here okay and say i wanted to add a seventh again every other note in the scale will add to your chord progression we'll go here drop this down start on this one two every other note all right, so this will, so say I wanted this to be like my change up or something, right? Boom. So now I have this. Okay. And then that's how instead of instead of creating pattern 1 and pattern 2, you just have your two patterns right here if it got confusing and you needed to rename it all you got to do is uh set a key command i set mine to n and i call maybe i'll call this uh main and maybe i'll call this bridge so that way i know that this is this is my main verse and then this is my bridge then once you go ahead and you have um you have all your different pieces of your song um, mapped out here you have your intro here's your verse piece here's your hook here you have another piece of a verse and then here you have this verse piece All right, see, so you have all these laid out again in a linear fashion. Um, this is this is called the arranger tool in Studio One, and what it does is it lets you double click over here. Um, then you can left right click on it, rename this outro or whatever, and whatever whatever pieces of your track you have saved or or, or you have arranged in this column right here 
it will always hold that for you in this arrange column over here so for example say i wanted to instead of like trying to highlight all these pieces and, and cut them over or you know paint the pattern all the way over here all i have to do is say i want the hook to come in right here i click on this hold alt to copy drag it over now all those are over there click hold alt to copy hold alt to copy do this and there i've just created a song as easy as that um the other thing you could do is you can use this view right here hold down all you know if you're if you're like um if you prefer to think in columns so you have you have that freedom you don't you don't have that type of um that type of freedom inside other dogs which is good and the great thing about studio one is they understand that people that they're that they're the new doll right so they understand that people are coming over from other dolls so even if you were in a situation where you really you're like you know what man um I, you know i downloaded this doll you know I, I spent the money on the artist edition or whatever and i really missed the pattern um based editing deal then you know what fam they got something for you bro you put on this scratch pad and what it's gonna do is you see you don't it, I'm, I'm gonna add different tracks here right so I'm, I'm putting in all these different all these different patterns and what scratch pad does is it keeps you can you can make ideas inside um, this portion of the arrange window but it doesn't appear on your song so for example say I wanted to take say uh, say I wanted to take the hook right I could copy and paste it over here okay and then say i wanted to do a version of the hook say i wanted to do a version of the hook without hi-hats right and then i could go ahead and bring that back into the session with no problem say i wanted to change this into hook two right okay so i changed that to hook two and I decide I'm going to make a portion of the hook with no drums. That's going to be my outro hook. And then I go ahead and bring this into the session. Okay. And say I wanted to, um, you know, add a different pattern. You just go ahead and press add scratch pad. That's the same thing as new pattern. It's going to give me scratch pad three and I can still go back to scratch pad one and have this here so it's a it's the same exact functionality but now you have different options for your stuff to be represented linear and you have you have the choice you don't have to you don't have to go into this method that requires extra clicks i mean for a lot of you guys out there um right now when you're starting out in production maybe you go to school you come home and you do nothing but work on beats for six hours you know and you got six hours every day five days a week then you work all weekend on beats and you wind up having you know something close to you know 40 or 50 hours to produce with a week that's great but eventually you're gonna get busy with things you know you have a girlfriend you'll have a car you'll start you'll start to need to work you know what i'm saying eventually you'll have to support yourself you have to move out of the house and you'll start you'll start working on your production business you'll need to network and eventually it you know it's, it might sound stupid if if you know if you have the luxury of time but eventually you're not going to have the luxury of time so if you learn early in your career to start to put a value on time and you start to view you know different ancillary tasks that you don't need to perform within your DAW as your enemy and you start to view things inside the doll that can save you time as your friend, you're going to wind up, you know, say if you're starting producing at 16 and you take this attitude, by the time you're 19, you're going to be so fast at making beats that people are going to want to work with you just based off of speed because the quality if if you make beats for 3 years the quality is going to come you know just through repetition and understanding music and trying new things but if you can match speed with that and you can pair speed with quality you're going to be an asset to anybody in your city 
or any studio. So anyhow, I wanted to make this a quick video just to kind of show the differences between how, you know, the different DAWs um, handle patterns. Um, if you feel the need to fucking comment that FL Studio is amazing and you've never used Studio One, I'm just going to tell you in the video that I don't respect your opinion. So, you know, if you have to comment, whatever, bro. But this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions, Studio One Tutorials.com. Stop by for exclusive content and premium tutorials. Keep it simple, don't be basic, and we'll see y'all on the next one.